This presentation introduces an important technique in genomics called GWAS. GWAS stands for Genome Wide Association Study. GWAS studies look for differences in DNA bases or groups of DNA bases across a large number of people. The effects of these individual differences on a particular complex characteristic is then measured. The kinds of characteristics studied are height, personality characteristics, intelligence, G and educational attainment. Let's have a quick word about the use of genetic language. A difference in a single DNA base is often called a single nucleotide polymorphism or SNP. Many genomic studies are looking for the effects of individual SNPs on a characteristic. Often the variant is surrounded by a number of other DNA bases to form a group which is known as a haplotype. Many haplotypes are inherited through the generations as a single unit. Ancestry studies, such as those undertaken by 23andMe, use internationally recognised haplotypes as a correlation with ethnic group. Both SNPs and haplotypes are sometimes called alleles. To simplify this, this presentation will use the term DNA variant to include SNPs, haplotypes and alleles. A GWAS study starts by choosing a characteristic for investigation. This could be general intelligence, G, or years of educational attainment, which is sometimes shortened to edu years. This example will think about human height. Participants for the study give a sample of their DNA, usually from saliva. Saliva can be used because it contains traces of cheek cells, which have nuclei containing DNA. At the same time, a measurement of the person's height is also recorded. The sample of the genome is taken to a sterile laboratory where precautions are taken to prevent cross-contamination of DNA by the research workers. The DNA is extracted from the cheek cells and is copied many times using a machine known as a PCR. This acts like a photocopier for DNA. PCR incidentally stands for polymerase chain reaction. It may take several hours for the DNA to be copied. The DNA is cut into small pieces using enzymes. The small pieces are called fragments. The fragments are treated with a chemical dye so that they glow brightly, they fluoresce under ultraviolet light. This is called labelling the DNA. Labelling the DNA helps researchers' computers to find pieces of DNA during the analysis. The DNA fragments are then treated so that the bonds between the nucleotide bases break and each fragment consists of a single strand of DNA. A key part of a GWAS study is called a gene chip, or more formally, a microarray. A microarray is a glass slide that is printed with thousands of tiny spots at specifically defined positions. Each spot is called a feature. There may be more than a million different features on a single microarray. The diagram shows a microarray and a feature. 
Each feature on a microarray contains a small fragment of single-stranded DNA, which may be 40 to 60 nucleotides long. In other words, it will contain between 40 and 60 DNA bases in a specific sequence. Each individual feature will contain many copies of this identical sequence of DNA. The DNA is attached to the microarray and will not become separated from it during the test. Each feature contains a different fragment of single-stranded DNA. Each DNA fragment on the microarray chip is carefully indexed so that its precise location on the chip is known. The earliest GWAS tests used almost 2 million locations of DNA across the genome to select out those sites which showed useful genetic variation. The participants' DNA fragments are allowed to mix with the DNA sequences fixed to the microarray. Those fragments of the participants' DNA that find a matching base sequence on the feature will bind to it. This is called hybridization. Those DNA fragments that do not hybridize with the DNA held on the microarray are washed off, leaving behind only those fragments which have attached to the DNA on the microarray. These fragments will fluoresce under ultraviolet light and a computer reads the patterns of fluorescence. It is then able to determine which sequences of DNA variants were present in the participant's DNA. The results of GWAS studies are often presented as a chart called a Manhattan plot. The Manhattan plot combines together the results of all of the participants in the study. The chart is arranged according to the order of the 22 pairs of chromosomes in the genome. The sex chromosomes X and Y are excluded from the analysis. Each dot on the Manhattan plot represents a single DNA variant. The solid blocks of colour represent thousands of DNA variants shared by the participants. The vertical lines represent DNA variants that occur in the same location on the same chromosome across the participants. The order of the lines on the chart represents a sequence from the top of chromosome pair 1 on the left right through to the bottom of chromosome pair 22 on the right. For each variant, each vertical line, the strength of its relative association with the characteristic, human height in this case, is plotted as the height of the line. Strongly associated variants have taller lines than weakly associated variants. Notice that the height of the line measures the strength of the association of the DNA variant with the characteristic. It does not tell you anything about the effect of that variant on the expression of the characteristic. It doesn't say anything about the effect of that variant on height. The higher the peak, the stronger the association of the DNA variant with the characteristic. Those vertical lines which stretch above the horizontal red bar are those that show statistical significance in the analysis. And you can see that there are about seven or eight different regions of the genome which do show a statistically significant association with height. A more recent study in 2020 suggested that there were about 372 protein coding genes 
identified as being significant in a large study of about three and a quarter thousand people. Overall, about 673 DNA variants were tested. So just over half were in protein coding regions. And the majority of these genes seem to be involved in the growth of bones and the skeleton. 